Selena Cox, who was known as Nina, led a pleasant and comfortable middle-class childhood in England with her brother and two sisters. When she was a young woman, the family moved to Italy for her father's health. It was an experience that she would recall with great fondness later in life. Nina initially showed little interest in religion. Her brother, Joseph Mason Cox, was a vicar. But she later recalled that she thought his missionary meetings were the dullest affairs, at which the speakers were the most dismal old slow coaches it was anyone's unhappy fate to attend to. In 1871, however, the murder of a prominent missionary bishop in Melanesia sparked an evangelical awakening. Nina now felt called for mission work, and an opportunity presented itself when her cousin William Bompers, a missionary for the Church Missionary Society in the Canadian Northwest and recently consecrated Bishop of Athabasca, proposed marriage to her in 1874. Just five days after the wedding, the couple commenced the lengthy journey to Bompers' headquarters at Fort Simpson, NWT, a Hudson's Bay Company post on the Mackenzie River. The new circumstances in which Nina found herself were far removed from her romantic images of missions in China and Japan. For a woman in her mid-forties, the change must have been something of a shock. Her home was little more than a log shack and there were times when the HBC post faced near starvation. Her husband was frequently away visiting potential converts in their camps, leaving Nina to fend for herself. I feel so lonely and desolate at times, she confided in the diary that she began for her sisters in England. However, the woman described later by her niece as self-willed, impulsive, but also full of kind thoughts for others, was not one to sit and feel sorry for herself. She threw her considerable energies into the work of the mission, learning the slavey language and taking a particular interest in native women. She also played the harmonium, bringing music to the Spartan church services which was much appreciated by the native members of the congregation, who enjoyed music tremendously. In her husband's absence in the summer of 1876, she traveled to Fort Chipuan, Alta, to make preliminary arrangements for the establishment of a new mission. Perhaps most important to her was her work with children. She offered religious and reading instruction, organized several children's choirs, and became known for her kindness in taking care of children whose parents were ill or absent. She informally adopted two of these children, planning to raise them as her own. The first, Jenny, Jeannie, died as an infant and the second, Awindia, baptized Lucy May, apparently died in England as a toddler. Nina also undertook medical work in the diocese. She was a firm believer in homeopathic remedies and always carried the appropriate supplies. The difficult living conditions soon took their toll. Nina suffered regularly from severe headaches, and during the winter of 1876 was struck with some more serious illness. In the spring, she traveled out to Winnipeg to recuperate. After two years she went back to mission work at Fort Simpson, but in 1883 she was summoned to England. While in England, Nina spoke to a number of audiences about the CMS's Northwest America mission and arranged the publication of her little book A Windia, in part a romantic tribute to Lucy May and in part publicity for the mission work. She returned briefly to the Mackenzie mission in 1886-87 but health and family concerns drew her back to England again and then to Montreal, where she remained until 1892. Here she worked actively with various women's auxiliaries to promote an interest in northern mission work. Fundraising was crucial because her husband had little interest in practical money problems and the CMS was gradually withdrawing its support. While she was in Montreal, the new Diocese of Selkirk, now Yukon, was created and Bishop Bompers moved to Buxton Mission at 40 Mile, on the Yukon River. Nina joined him there in 1892. In 1896 she was summoned to England again because her elder sister was seriously ill. When she returned to the Yukon, she found herself in the middle of the Klondike Gold Rush. She embraced the miners at the mission just as warmly as she had the native peoples, 
opening a social center to provide magazines, newspapers, music, and a little religion to improve their lives. In 1901, Bishop Bompas moved his permanent headquarters to Caribou Crossing, Carcross, and three years later Nina went on a tour to speak to women's auxiliaries in Toronto, Ottawa, Montreal, and Quebec. She raised $800 in Toronto so that a church could be built at Carcross. Then on the 9th of June 1906 her beloved husband died and she decided to move to Montreal to live with two nieces in Westmount. Until her death in 1917, in spite of her frail body, she continued to speak about Northern Mission work and inspired her friends and audiences with the example of her life and her enthusiasm for Christian proselytizing. While Selina Cox Bompas is often remembered as the wife of a well-known missionary, it is clear that she saw herself as a missionary in her own right. Indeed, her contributions to the CMS mission in terms of teaching and fundraising may, in the end, have had a more lasting effect on Northern society than his evangelizing. Hey guys, welcome to Mill Bay Church and School. This is what we are going to visit today. This is a major part of our history in the area here. And we will also meet up with a missionary, a lady that would do missionary work and was also a teacher. That is why for the school. So as we go along in this video, you will find out more and more. So I'm going to start by filming the church, the outside of course, we can't go inside. And then the cemetery of this church, where we will find the lady that did a lot of, of uh, work, volunteer working, missionary working for this church. And then we will go to her school. So this is an Anglican church. St. Barnaby's Anglican Church. So this is um, actually the religion where my parents, my family belongs to. Which is uh, Anglican. I don't know how you Americans say this, but... <laughs> so let's go on. So if you see up here, that is the bell, the bell tower. And if you go down, sorry for the sun and the car in the way, but it's a beautiful historical church that dates back to 1875, I believe. It is very beautiful. There we go. It looks like the church that um, I got my Chunky Monkey baptized. <laughs> I want to say his name on YouTube. Personal people know his name, but 
YouTube regular people are going to know him as Chunky Monkey. <laughs> so, this is a very beautiful church. That's the address there. And I was reading a little bit of history about this church. Unfortunately, in 2014, some clowns decided to steal the bell from this church, which is very dumb, I'd say. So I'm going to try and stick the camera in the window and tell me what you see, guys. Oh, I see pews and a beautiful glass-stained window. Beautiful pews. That's interesting. And we'll take a look at the other window because the windows are taller than me. They're higher than me, so here we go. This is the next one. Pretty interesting. Wow. Very, very beautiful. So that's the trees in back of me, guys, that you're seeing. It's a reflection. Okay. And, oh, you can't see from here. This is the entrance. I wanted to show you guys the school. But the trees are in the way. So I guess we'll have to wait for later. So next time I pick up the camera, I'm going to be in the cemetery. Hold on. Okay, guys, I am now in the cemetery. Iron Age. Iron Age. Okay. I just presented myself to the spirits. Like I said before, spirits, my name is Sandra. I come here with peace and respect. I am just here to document your story. If you have something to say, you can speak through this box here and I will hear you. And feel free to show yourself to the camera. I will see you later. So we will walk around guys and try to find the pioneer that uh, did all this missionary work and we will try and speak with her. So let's walk around and at the same time spirit talkers playing. It said Iron Age. So we'll see what else it has to say. So it starts off here. Got one in the trees there. But there's some on the ground here. And I know the last burial of this cemetery, for this cemetery, goes up to 2020. Can't remember the month, but I know it was 2020. So we will find here old headstones and new headstones. Headstones that have been uh, free. Free. <laughs> Yes, you are free to roam around and free to tell us your story and show yourself to us. This is your home, so we come with respect for you. Okay, yeah, so you'll get some that have been remodeled, I guess. You'll see old dates, but new headstones. So I'm going to try and get closer to the ones here in the back without stepping on nobody. A You're a woman. A woman. Oh, that's good to know. I am too. <laughs> Here's a... erected by his mother in affection... infectionate remembrance of Alexander Earth died at Milby. This is the city of Milby, well, the town. <laughs> yeah, and the people here are mostly from Scotland, as you can see here. 
there's a lot of Irish people also in the area. So this is pretty nice to see that it's very well maintained and unfortunately it's on a highway. That is Highway 147. If you go on my left, on my right, go forward. go forward. Yes, okay. If you go on my right, you are going to the town of uh, Quetzalcook. And if you're going to the left, you'll wind up in Lennoxville. Then after Lennoxville, well, it's Sherbrooke. So it's set to go Twins. forward. Twins. So if I go forward, I'm going to come face with some twins. Aww. Okay, I'll try. Oh, look at this one has a gardening tool on it. Maybe this person likes gardening. Or, but there's, okay, there's no date that passed away. So they're not passed away yet, I guess. So let's see if we can find those twins. And uh, the lady that did a lot of work for this, she raised, this is the church guy on a beautiful angle. Look at that. She raised lots of money for this church, is what I've read from Find a Grave website. Okay. Oh, here's the uh, last uh, burial, guys. You see it right now. It says, Rita Amanda, 1933 to 2020. Sarazin. Oh, and there's a little rock. It's so cute. Okay. But that's not the name I'm looking for. That's Rita again. Oh, this is Rita McKay. She's not passed away Between. yet. Between, oh, between these two. Okay. Let me just see. No. Oh, there. No, that's Grandpa and Grandma. Right there. There, she was saying, between here. This one. Hmm. Oh, there's one here. It's written written Fred but he's not there yet and then here there's James Claremont hmm okay I don't know if you're seeing something guys I got the sun right in the face um, here's one with a Canadian flag The Sayers, and that's not the one I'm looking for, but this one served for Canada. So thank you for your service, sir. We appreciate it. Okay, let's move on. Here we got, oh wow, look at this one. Now that is beautiful. I hope you can see it on the camera. Uh, I wonder where she could be. She could be in the very, very old Sue. Sue. Okay, if I find a Sue, I'll find her. Yeah, like I said, she could be in a very, very old section. Okay, this one. Hope you guys can see this one. Wow, it's nice and clean though. Wow. 1970s. 1970s. Wow, okay. Oh, and they're the babies of this family. Oh. 1970s. Now, where would I find that? I hope I can find a lady. So we can have a chat. Go all the way down here 
I'm walking all cricket, guys, so if the image is bumpy, sorry. It's not uh, very obvious to walk here. There's like bumps coming up, bumps coming down. Okay. If I see the name, I'll recognize it right away. I just would like to keep it a surprise. We're bound to find it. That's for sure. If we look at the old ones. We're following you. You are following me. That's okay. You can follow me here, but only here, please. You're not allowed to follow me home after or anything like that. Is that a deal? Hmm. Okay. Oh, I really do hope we can find her. Came all this way to find her. Um. No. Let me see here. These are pretty recent dates, though. Wow. Okay. Him. Okay. Who's him? Who are you talking about? This is a child son of Oliver. Oh, that's probably the him. Erwick. Hmm. Starting to run out of hope, guys. Maybe they took down her headstone. That wouldn't be nice. See, people left stones here on this one. There's a bench here. Oh, here it should be energetic because there's a little stream with lots of current. Oh, here, look at this. Wow, this is a bench in memory of Audrey L. Page or Brown. 1928. 2009. Daddy. Daddy? Are you looking for your daddy? Donated by the Browns Shotman Ord family. Oh, that is nice. Look, I wonder if you guys can see the stream. Oh, you can. Look how pretty. Oh, wait. I'm going to try and over the fence if <laughs> you know me how tall I am so here we go oh darn hold on can you see down there see the water flowing with the rocks oh right here is better oh there's like a little bridge like dirty dancing, they would practice on a log like that. <laughs> Nostalgia moments, I guess. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. So they get energy. They can, like, feed themselves off of this water. If I can, I wonder, is it coming in? Just a little. The camera is not doing it justice as they say. Oh, here's the waterfall I was looking for. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful, guys? Wow. Very beautiful and relaxing. Okay, so we will continue our walk around. 
was really hoping to try and communicate with the star of the day. But I guess can't find her. That'd be so sad. Here, I'll sit you guys here on the family bench here. And I'll fix up the spirit talker that's on its own thinking right now. I don't know what happened, but... Okay, it's loading up again. And power. So spirits, if you need energy to speak with me, or show yourself to me, there's that little stream there that you can get some energy from, in case you didn't know. Okay, so let's continue our walk and see if we can find our special lady. If not, at the end, I will show a photo of her at least that Find a Grave provides. Okay, up here, no. How about this one? No. Darn. Hear the footsteps. Hear the footsteps. Well, I thought I heard some footsteps near the water in the forest. But I thought it was my imagination going wild again. Oh, this one was a hockey player, guys. Look at that. Isn't that cool? Gary George, March 9th, 1957, October 20th, 2021. Oh. That is very cool. It's a hockey player. So, I'm not finding, but a lot of people got visitors which is fun. You can tell by the little pebbles they got on their headstones. So I'm back to the beginning, guys. <laughs> well, at least we visited the cemetery where she's supposed to be. Maybe her headstone broke and it's somewhere getting fixed is what I really hope. It's a very small, small cemetery though. Oh. Really, I didn't find nothing. Even her daughter's supposed to be here. And I haven't seen nothing of that either. Well, they're probably on the same headstone, you know? Yeah. So. See, this is where we started. And if you see that red building in the background, guys, that's the school. Well, they remodeled it, but that's the school the missionary lady taught at. So we're going to go there next. Just want to check out this little headstone here. Make sure. Maybe this is her and we don't know. Uh, I don't think so. No. No. And small like that, there's a big chance that could be a baby. So, okay, guys. I'm going to turn off the camera for now. Next time I turn it on, we're going to be on the other side of the street at that school. Maybe we can communicate with her there. Hold on. So guys, I am back. I am at the school. This is a description 
of the school, heritage school. So here's a look at it. So this would be the school of the teacher that we were trying to find in the cemetery earlier. <laughs> look, there's even an out bag. That's probably a maintenance shed. That's probably not original. But I think that outback toilet is. I wonder, can we go inside this outback toilet? <laughs> There's even the moon on it. I wonder what this big stone has to do with anything. <laughs> so I got the spirit talker playing also. There's cameras here, guys. There's like... One right there on the green post. Then you got the Canadian flag. So this would have been the schoolyard. But I think they moved the school here. It was somewhere further away. Oh, this looks kind of scary. <laughs> it's locked. Tell me what you see, guys. Do you see a real toilet? And there's a house across the street. And I think they are snooping on what I am doing. And he just yelled something. I do not know what it is, but I think they got their finger on redial 911. So I guess we're just going to have to be satisfied with it like this. So I guess this children would come through here. A very beautiful school. For sure they remodeled. But the windows. Let's see if you can see something guys. This is really high. That's the closest you can get. Sorry about that guys. <laughs> Look at these pretty windows. There's a bee there. Oh, the windows are lower here. I think they look. <laughs> oh, there. That's the closest. I hope you can see something, guys. Oh. Oh, that was the biggest stretch I ever done. Oh look and there's like a public park there. So I guess we're allowed. Cause before, like ten years ago, <laughs> the doors would be open to this school. And I've always wondered what this big doctor. doctor Where's the doctor? There's no doctor here. Maybe it's donated from a doctor, I guess. I don't know, it looks like a big donut. Maybe it's the first. I don't want to say anything, just in case. I really don't know. It looks like, you know, those des discs to sharpen knives it would turn really fast I don't know there's a little sign here I think so what does this have to do with the school is that one of the wheels they use to transport the school here let's see not even guys <laughs> it's the wheel from need help yeah I would need help eh? <laughs> It's the wheel from 
um, a grit mill. Wow, <laughs> always totally way off. See, it's right here. You can see that wheel is that wheel. And this used to be the mill. I wonder where it is. I'm gonna try and stay here for a bit, try to read it for myself even. And maybe we'll go there one day. That is cool. I didn't know that. I really was always wondering what's up with this big wheel. Now he we all know. You. He can affect me. Who can affect me? The doctor? The principal of the school or what? Well, okay. So what I'm going to do now, guys, is I'm going to try and set up the camera in a private way. And we'll try and communicate with um, the teacher of the school, with Nicrophonics and all that. So have a good look at the school. It's very pretty. And I'll be right back. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna try really quick and see if we can communicate with the teacher of the school or a student, who knows. If not, well, that'll be the end of the video. So I'm gonna start Necrophonics. Okay. So there's traffic. Don't forget about the traffic. So, hello spirits. My name is Sandra and I would like I would like to talk to the last teacher that taught in this school. Was it a lady teacher? There's whispering. You have to talk louder, please. How many students did you have? How long? How long have you taught in this school? How many boy students did you have? How many girl spirit, uh, students did you have? There's a big truck on its Jacobs. Do you remember what year was your last year of teaching in this school? Was it at the end of the 18th century? Can you tell me a year? Or maybe the year you started here? How about the year you passed away? Are you still in this school today? have something to tell us. A lot of visitors come and never speak with you. I am a visitor and I've come to speak with you. Are some children spirits students with you here also? How many students are here playing outside? Is it recess time? Yeah. 
for the teacher. <coughs> Do you remember how you passed away? Not talkative too much. I guess they're hot too. It's very hot today in Canada. Very sunny. The sun is Teacher, did you pass away in your classroom, schoolhouse? So I'm saying those two big windows over there at the end are the classroom. The door in the little window here must be her house. It was like connected. I wonder if I'm right. Am I right on that, teacher? What was your favorite grade to teach? Was it grade six, grade five, four, three, two, nine? Oh, did you teach French or English? The two? I think I heard two. <laughs> so you would teach in French and English? Because back then, guys, there wasn't any problems with French and English back then. Now it's such a big deal if you're speaking French or English. Did you have any First Nation children in the school with you? I don't think so. Are there any French speaking spirits that would like to speak? Y a tu des esprits en français qui voudraient me parler? Oui. Peux tu me dire ton nom? Étais-tu professeur? Elle est-tu à l'école ici? Étais-tu étudiant ici? Okay, so this was a student from here, a male student. But he speaks French only. Okay, spirits, if you have something to say, please say it now because I'm going to be turning this off soon and I'll be ending the video on that note. So, if you have a message, if you have a message, please let me know what I'm going to do. I'm going to close the video soon. Thank you. Well, okay, spirits. Thank you for communicating with me. You are not allowed to follow me. You must stay here. This is your home. You're not allowed to attach yourself to me, my equipment, the person that I'm with. Okay. Tu n'as pas le droit de t'attacher à moi ou la personne qui est avec moi, l'équipement qui est ici. Tu dois rester ici. Ici, c'est ta maison. So I repeated it in French, guys, just to make sure this time. <laughs> so on that note, guys, that'll be it for now. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. And I'll see you around the broom somewhere. Goodbye, spirits. Thank you.